What's going on guys? This week we're going to be working on our split. Seriously. Seriously, dude, this week, I said we're going to work on a splitter. Splitter? No! Wings! What, what is your no. I, thought, I thought this was next week we were going to work on the, the wing. I thought... But, no, we're working well, on the splitter. I made the, the template? No. no. Get out of here. No. I can't... I... This? will become this. Behind me, you see my E39 M5 track car. I am working on building a splitter for it. As you can see here, I started with a cardboard template that has then moved on to a plywood template, <clears throat> overcut, so that I can trim it down to Oh, there I am. Trim it down to the size that I want. Now, prior to the incredibly tedious process of trimming and trimming, sanding and trimming, I had to come up with a mounting solution. And what you see me doing here is inserting some M8 rivet nuts into this one by one cross tube that I'll talk about a little bit later. But ultimately what this was, was a way to span the front of the splitter and then attach it um, which is what you're looking at here to these down bars that I made. So what I'll do is I'll weld these down tubes on both sides, get everybody line back up. And then you can see right here where we're bolted in to the back of the subframe and it'll hold itself up there. Throw the bumper back on. See how they look together. Sweet. So you see with it on, I'm only gonna have a small gap. I'm gonna have to close up here. Then I can cut it to whatever profile I want. For those of you wondering what those big tubes are for, they go to my modified fog light brackets right here and straight into the intake boxes. Now to start the actual assembly process. So you can see that the splitter is being held up on those jack stands and I need to tack that crossbar to the down tubes. I like to preheat dissimilar metals mainly to um, not have to put so much heat into the thin stuff on top. It tends to work out. And here goes the on and off, on and off of the bumper. As I was getting the actual height set of the splitter, I had to trim and trim. And I think ultimately when I fiberglass the gap on the bottom, I wind up cutting all that bottom of the bumper out and just starting fresh with whatever I come up with. Here I used a, a two x four template cut down to four and a half inches, which will be the distance from the base of the bumper, not necessarily from the front of the bumper that I'm going to trim down and be my finished size. As you can see, trim, trim, cut, router, sand, cut, router, trim, until I got it to a point where I felt like it was acceptable. And of course, no YouTube video is sound without the airplane flying GoPro. What you don't see here is how many times I dropped it just to get this one shot. But ultimately you can see that the studs really do work quite well and gives me the opportunity to line something up on the front before I put the rear mounting bolts in and then I could swing back around and do the front. 
even laying on the ground, I think that's going to be helpful at the track if I have to take this thing on and off. I'm test fitting the splash panels back in there. I really want to seal up those wheel wells as much as I can to prevent turbulence in there. And you probably saw that I was using um, some sheet metal that I bent up as my side supports, but ultimately I decided that wasn't going to work. I'll talk about that a little bit later when I come up with a new solution. I test fit the wheels, got those in there, made sure that I had plenty of room for full articulation. Uh, I yet to see if I'll have articulation under load, but if I catch a little bit of the splitter, it will be easy to fix because I'll have to take that area off anyhow. As you can see though, this process was not short of removing that bumper a million times. As with any car that you'd be doing this to, you want to get the fitment as close as possible. And um, everything kept getting in the way. I was adjusting the height, I was adjusting how the splash panels were interacting. But again, ultimately, you can see it came together quite well. Okay, it's time to clean it up, throw some paint at it, see if it sticks. That didn't really work. Let's try it again. I, I've seen this on YouTube before. I, I swear it works. And still didn't work. Crap. I'm going to have to do this the hard way. So yes, my method is unconventional. This is an old used paintbrush that I use for all of these uh, not so delicate painting projects. And I just dumped out way too much on here, but that did play a big part in how this finished. I wanted it to be thicker so that when I came back here with the roller and let it tack over, it would give it um, a bit more of a dimpled look. And as it dried, it did actually work out really well, revealing a little bit of wood grain, obviously being birch, but it turned out great. While it was drying, I was off to finishing uh, the welding process on my support tube. Again, just like before, I preheat when I have a thick metal up against a thin metal, try to get better penetration on the thicker side. And I just ran beads around everything here using a Harbor Freight Vulcan machine, nothing special, MIG with um, 7525 gas. I am adjusting the settings over on the welder as I'm welding different thicknesses. As I am. It's kind of hard to tell, but I used a high nap roller, let the paint get tacky, and then rolled it again to try to give it that ABS look. Not that uh, birch plywood isn't cheap these days, but yeah, you figure you try to make it look nice. All right, so here's where we're at. We have the mounts built up on the chassis. Take a look. What I did was I took some one by one square tube, used three quarter inch DOM, and then a piece of, uh, I don't know, it was leftover stock that I had, and another piece of three quarter DOM, dropped it down, ran across, create a little bottom support, I've got these studs in here to help me line up when I'm putting the splitter on. And then I used M8 rivnuts nuts across for the mounting on the bottom. And then in the subframe itself, I added a pair of rivnuts nuts as well. There's actually five holes, one, two, three, 
four and five, you can't see obviously, that are already in the frame there. And let's see, to test the capacity on this uh, frame here that I built, I'm gonna do the me test. Give it a shake, it's got a tiny bit of play, but it'll hold me up, so I'm assuming it's gonna hold whatever pressure uh, I can achieve speed-wise for the splitter itself. Now I just have to get that splitter back up to test it. Sparing you the trouble of watching me struggle getting this thing up here, you can see the hardware running across. And in the back, you can see I shaped it all the way around to the factory splash panels. Eventually I'll put some splitter ramps here where the originals would have been to help duct more air up, but I am running factory brake ducting, at least to get air into the wheel well. I will have a bit of a gap here. I might pull apart the factory splash panel, take these wings off to help seal up the engine bay a little better. Now I need to figure out the wings over here. So as you'd see, there is a bit of movement. I had originally thought to install these brackets that I made out of some spare parts, much like this, but I really don't like the idea of this being totally stiff on this side. I'd like there to be some give in the instance that I take out some curbing on track or autocross, take out a cone and squeeze that section in. So I have an idea, just need to get the car lowered down and I'll show you what I'm thinking. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna use a set of turnbuckles and the tension needs to hold the wing up so that as the air is hitting it, it doesn't push it down. And I'm gonna use some 332nd steel cable, stainless steel, and put it together with a turnbuckle up to the factory bumper mount, which is what I'm gonna make now. Alrighty, let's see what the uh, Home Depot parts been as for us. Get these guys. Six foot and three quarter, or three and three, three thirty seconds. Stainless cable, a couple turnbuckles, a bunch of ferrules, and some washers. So the plan is to run this um, carriage bolt up through the bottom of the splitter, throw a quarter nut on there, take, let's see, we have left turning and right turning, take one side out of the turnbuckle, and then we're going to install that inside or install the uh, carriage bolt through the turnbuckle. Through here, run the cable through this side and then up to the uh, bumper mount, like I was saying, crank down the turnbuckle and we'll have ourselves a nice little tensioning system on the outside to keep the splitter flat under load. Let's work on putting that together. So for now, I'm planning to keep the splash panel. I may trim off a portion of it just for what, I don't know, a couple ounces of lightweight that might bring. But for now, the splitter itself weighs about 17 pounds. So I'm obviously adding some weight to the front, plus the downforce that it may bring assuming any of my aerodynamic knowledge is correct. Again, assuming. Who knows if I know what I'm doing. So with this stainless bolt here, now I can take the carriage, draw it down. With the cable crimping, I have a hydraulic crimping tool for making battery cables and such. I'm hoping one of the smaller bits will fit for this test. So we have a six, there's a 
before. These don't actually coincide with any gauge numbers. I'm not sure what they were thinking with these, but they work. Wasn't sure if these were gonna work, but let's see how bad. It doesn't look half bad. At least it doesn't look like it's gonna move. Now, close up our loop. Let's see what we can do on the other side. enough to move the rack. It's acceptable. Alright, now we gotta start putting it back together. Well, I feel like that's somewhat acceptable looking. This needs to be adjusted, obviously. I'm going to have to fill it with something. That'll have to come at a later date. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. Damn, what a hell of a view. I feel good. You look great. I like you. I can't wait. Our first time, our first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my heart erase So catch me if I fall Well, I would say it didn't turn out too bad Thanks for watching.
like, subscribe, give me feedback. You know what to do. Thanks. Got it all on time. I'm loving your vibe.